Hey everybody, Matt here today and um, this is going to be kind of a long video but we're going to cover a lot of material. We're going to go over all kinds of different things about backpacking. I have my little list here somewhere but I don't see it right now but I know what's on there first. Alright, first thing we're going to cover is backpacks for backpacking. Now this is your average everyday school backpack. Okay, for backpacking this is not going to work very well for many reasons. You don't have very good back support here. These straps aren't very thick. You know, not extremely comfortable for long hikes. And you don't have that waist strap. That's the key with backpacking backpacks is you want to have a waist strap. So your hips can be carrying a lot of that weight and not wearing your shoulders out. Um, before I move on, just a little bit of why I'm doing this video. Um, this video is uh, mainly for my troop because our troop is going on a backpacking trip. We got a lot of new guys and just uh, just some overall tips. But you know, backpacking it's not just for Boy Scouts. Anybody can do it and have a good time. So these tips can go for anybody interested in backpacking. All right, I found my list. All right, next backpack is a um, day pack looking thing. Okay, this has a waist strap. Yeah. Not a very thick waist strap though. So this, this you might be able to do a one-nighter in if you were very, very, very good with weight and you weren't carrying a lot of water, which in Florida, especially summer in Florida, you're gonna have to carry a lot of water. So that wouldn't really be ideal. This is what I'm probably gonna be backpacking with. This is a, a tactical day pack. It does not have a waist strap. I took the waist strap off, but I'm kind of a large guy, so I can do, the, if I have it light enough, I don't need a waist strap. My shoulders can carry the weight. But um, this one, you, it's, you can do it with it. It just, you just got to be real careful with what all you put in there. Now this here is a backpacking backpack. This is my Osprey Atmos 50. It has great back support, really good straps with a um, chest strap right here. And then you got a hip belt right here, which is um, very padded and comfortable. This is a good backpack for longer trips because you have all that support and everything. And it's going to be easier to carry for long periods than, say, the little school backpack or even my tactical day pack and it has obviously a lot more space in it um, I did a review of this backpack it's in one of my earlier videos so if you want to see more about this go to that video if you please um, that's it for backpacks now we're going to go to uh, sleeping stuff okay now you want um, if you're tent camping you're gonna want a pad even if you're hammock camping, depending on what the weather's like, you might want a pad or an underquilt for a hammock. But um, let me show you a couple examples of sleeping pads. Get them up here. Okay, we're going to start with the most common, easiest to get sleeping pad. This is your average blue pad. Um, I've cut mine short and um, I've given it like a, a mummy style cut to it. You don't have to do that. You can keep yours completely intact. I paid about five or six dollars at Walmart for this and this will keep you very warm. So if you're just starting out and you need to get some gear, I highly recommend getting just one of these blue pads. It doesn't weigh, it doesn't weigh anything and it'll keep you warm. Only thing is bulk and that's it. But you can stick, if you have a backpack where you can stick it on the bottom, bulk is not a problem then and very lightweight very cheap very effective that's actually the one that I use most of the time and I have some pretty good gear here and yet I still use that one so alright next is the um, good old Thermarest um, I believe it's the Thermarest Trail uh, it's a large pad I think it's 25 inches so if you're like me you know rather large then something like this would be pretty ideal. Those blue pads, those can get those. You can get those pretty large too. If you don't want to spend a lot of money on one of these inflatable ones, you can get a, um, what's called a Thermarest Ridge Rest. 
you can get those in 20 inches, 25 inches, like this one. And those are about $25. Really light, but really comfortable too. So that's another sleeping pad option. Here we have an even smaller, compact, lighter pad. This is a Big Agnes pad. It's a mummy pad. And this bad boy is like the Mac Daddy of sleeping pads right here. These Big Agnes ones. They are pretty expensive, but I think they're pretty worth it because they're super light and they're super comfortable because you can inflate these things. Let me see if I can inflate it a little bit for you. These things are kind of difficult to inflate. but This thing will get up to almost like an air mattress. I just put a good bit of air into this thing and it's not even started to puff up. So this thing gets, takes, puts, gets a lot of air into it. It puffs up really thick. It gets about that thick if you can see my hands there. I mean, it, it's, and you can let a little bit of air out to give you some plush, you know, a little bit of give. And it keeps you really warm too. So, but then again, that, that pad right there is about 100, 100 bucks. So, you know, you get what you pay for. The only thing you're basically buying with that hundred bucks is a compact size and something that's a little more comfortable than say your average blue pad or thermo rest. Okay, that uh, concludes the pads. Now we're going to move on to actual um, top insulation. Um, what we have here is some sleeping bags. Now for Florida in summer this here is a 45 degree sleeping bag, real lightweight, real compact, real comfortable, and it's a mummy bag, there it is, and it's a real nice sleeping bag, Com compact, real, real small with this compression strap, weighs about a pound, but it only is good for about 45 degrees, and um, I'd only take it down to about 50 degrees just by itself in a pad. That's just what I would go on it. This here is a uh, Slumberjack. I call this my winter bag. I mean, some of you up north are probably scoffing at this as a winter bag, but because it only goes down to about 30 degrees. But in Florida, you know, that's you don't really need much more than that. But up more up north, you're going to want to get a zero degree bag, probably something like that. Anyway. So this, of course, is a lot bigger, a lot fluffier um, mummy bag with a hood, just like this one. But um, then again, there's um, you know money. You gotta buy the bag. If you don't want to pay a whole lot on a sleeping bag, um, what I would recommend is you look into wool blankets. That's just my two cents, because wool blankets. Um, give good top and bottom insulation. If you get a really good one, you know, 100% wool blanket, you don't have to use a pad. But that's only if you get a really good one. If you get one of these cheaper 70-30 mixes, um, you're going to be kind of cold. In summer, you should be fine, but in winter, you get, you get kind of cold. Um, just a little side note here from that blue pad, I'm going to talk about chairs for just a second. Now, um, this is a what's called a Thermarest Trekker right here and you put your Thermarest sleeping pad into this and it has buckles on the side and it becomes a chair. I don't have time to go into detail with that now but I might do a later video on it. But this here is nice, real lightweight but not really compact and it only works if I have my Thermarest pad. This here is a scrap of that blue pad that I had. And I can keep this, you know, just in a little pocket in my backpack, fold it up. And when it's time for lunch or something, I can just pull it out, set it on a stump, and sit on it. So instead of having to get my um, sleeping pad out, inflate it, and use it as a chair. So that's just another little option. I mean, a lot of it's um, comfort. If you want to carry a little more weight to have a little more comfort, you know, that's totally up to you. 
next on the list here is clothing. That's why I have a pile of clothes over here. It's not because I'm a, um, it's not because my room is messy. It's, be it's for the video. It's for the video. <laughs> All right, anyway, so, um, let's start with the first layer of clothing that you're going to have. Okay, warning here. Um, but when you're trekking, you want to have synthetic underwear. You don't want to have cotton stuff because, needless to say, cotton will not be your friend when you're sweating. <clears throat> so you want to look into getting some synthetic underoos. Second of all, when you're hiking and you have your boots on, what you going to have? Oh, yeah, I'm going to have my little pair of white socks. Well, no, you don't want those. You want a good pair of backpacking socks. But these, they will work. But you want to have, even with backpacking socks, you want to have what's called sock liners. Now, you can buy sock liners, or you can use a good pair of dress socks. So, again, there, you know, you got your more expensive stuff, actually, for backpacking, and then you got some more common man stuff. All right. Second layer is, of course, you know, you're going to have your pants and your shirt. Let's see here. Um, this is an Under Armour shirt right here, and um, it's real moisture wicking material, um, like swim shirts and stuff like that, real moisture wicking stuff, that's what you want to have, not a cotton t-shirt like this. And then you have these pants right here, um, and again, they're like kind of like fishing pants, tight, you know, real absorbent. Um, one thing you want to stay away from at all costs is this stuff. Denim is a curse word in the backpacking community. Um, you hike in jeans, it's going to be terrible. You do not want to hike in jeans or denim stuff because this stuff gets wet from sweat and it takes an eternity to dry out. And that's more weight. It, it also, just by itself, it's heavier, so do not, please, do not bring denim. You will be regretting it. All right, and then here we have a, um, I think this is actually a hiking shirt. I think I did a backpacking basics video with these shirts, but these are, um, this is basically just a long sleeve fishing shirt. Again, real moisture wicking. It helps, I mean, it's real cool because it has these little vents and stuff where it's just kind of mesh, mesh fabric. So if it's still kind of warm out, you can put that on and roll the sleeves down and you'll still get air and stuff flowing. It'll just, it might just help keep some mosquitoes off too. So that's that. And then for colder weather, um, here is your stereotypical Walmart zip up hoodie right here. This will work. But it doesn't have great warming value. It doesn't keep you as warm as other things. It's heavier. It's just not ideal. But it, it will work. This here is a um, U.S. Army issue fleece um, inner layer. And this is what I would use over that. It's much lighter, more compactable and has a much greater warming value. But again, if you can't find these, um, just try to look for something, something that'll work. Um, you can find U.S. Army surplus, like fleece jackets and stuff. You, you want to go for fleece and not your regular cotton, because that's just, it's just a bad idea. It's got bad idea written all over it. And then for cold weather, this isn't fleece or anything. This is, this is your stereotypical you know, beanie, but I like it. Keeps my noggin warm. And it works real well. And with beanies, when you go to sleep at night, you want to wear, and it's cold out, you want to wear a good pair of socks and a good beanie like this. And that'll keep your body heat. Um, the two places that it likes to get out is from your head and your feet. Don't ask me how that works. I have no idea. I just know it's happened to me plenty of times. All right, another good... Um, clothing accessory here is um, what's called a buff headgear. This isn't a buff, this is a knockoff called a turtle fur, but it's still got the same principle. It's very moisture wicking, 
you get into uh, some sandy area and you can pull it up as like a dust shield. Um, you can use it as a balaclava even though it looks really weird. Like this. Doesn't look really cool, but hey, if it works, it works, you know? And for you ladies that have nice long hair, you can use it as a scrunchie. If you had to. Me, if I'm not using it, I like to just wrap it around my wrist. Like that. You know, kind of stylish. You can also do all kinds of different hats with it. Probably one of my favorite is the... It's called the pirate hat. There you go. So you got your headpiece there and it's got a little doohickey back there. Yeah, you'll see Dave Canterbury wearing these on Dual Survival and stuff a lot. And then uh, you can also wear it like he does, typical Survivor. You know, got the band and stuff. Anyway, there's lots of YouTube videos on how to wear those, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. Alright, outer layer. Rain jacket. Rain gear. It's very good to have. This is a good lightweight backpacking rain jacket. Most any rain jacket will do, I guess. You just want it to be really light and pretty compactable. This is a pair of rain pants. I can I'll confess I've never used these before. But if you had to, you could. And you can find, you know, rain suits like that maybe 30 bucks somewhere. You just gotta look around for it. Okay, next is shelter. Okay, before I get into shelter and different kinds of shelter, I'm gonna discuss um, group shelter. When you're camping with um, somebody who's a little more who's inexperienced, you know, you're both kind of newbies at it. You wanna um, you wanna camp together. You wanna have like a two or three man tent, and you wanna share it. You can share the weight, like one guy. Let me give you an example here. This here is a uh, Eureka two-man or two-man tent. I have it divided up. This is the actual tent itself, and this is the tarp, or this is the uh, rain fly, and the poles. Now, if you're camping, if you're sharing a tent, one guy can carry this, and one guy can carry this, and that you know it distributes the weight so it's not as heavy, and it's just. Um, it's a good idea. And you can do the same thing with a cook kit. You know, if you if you got a big cook kit, um, we're going to get into cook kits later, but that's just the idea of um, buddy camping like that, where, you know, you got two guys, they can share a tent, and they can just, you know, they can divide the tent up. Um, stuff like that, you know. It's just a good way to conserve weight and such. And so that's, you know, that's one option. You've got your tent. You can do what I do and go in a hammock. Again, kind of expensive. I mean, a hammock like this, Hammock Bliss, that's going to be cheaper than your two-man tent over there with a Eureka Spitfire. This is going to be a cheaper option. But then you got your Warbonnet Blackbird here, not so cheap an option. And so that's just you got to consider that and. You know, if you got a camping buddy who's a real camping enthusiast, you might be able to borrow a tent. Just, just, just clean it out first. Just, just sweep it out. You know, I've had that before. People borrow tents and then they return them, and it's like, oh my goodness, what did you wear your shoes in here? <laughs> anyway, another option for shelter is you can tarp camp. I have done this many times. It's pretty fun to do, um, especially in cool weather because you can get a nice airflow through there. Anyway, this is a um, this is a more expensive tarp. This is my Warbonnet um, Superfly. It's got doors, pullouts, so it's kind of the Lamborghini of tarps, you know, the those sill nylon ones. But you can go down to your average, you know, Home Depot, you know, whatever, and pick up one of those little blue tarps. You'll be fine. Just as good as one of these in repelling rain. And you can pitch it, and it's a very enjoyable campout. Okay miscellaneous items ah okay one second
I had a lot of stuff to cover. All right, so when you're packing all this stuff up, you it's a good idea to pack it in these. It's called dry sacks. You can get these on Campmore, Amazon, you can get them all, all different sizes. But these keep everything nice and dry. So let's say I want to keep my camp towel nice and dry here. I'll stick this one here in a dry sack. I'll stick this other one here in a dry sack here. And then I'll just roll it up like that the air out of it here and roll it and then I'll pull around and clip it just like that and it's going to stay completely dry so these are very good to have but if you don't ha if you don't want to get these your average Ziploc bag ought to work just fine all right um, looking at these this is a Walmart camp towel really lightweight super absorbent very very good to have because if you go swimming or something when you're out on the trail you want to be able to dry yourself off this is an MSR camp towel it's a lot smaller but it is also super absorbent I could fill this thing with water I mean this could be soaked I could wring the water out and it, it could still be it would still be damp but then I could dry myself off completely with it so that's pretty good but if you don't want to get one of those Run down to your Walmart, grab one of these, cheap, and it works. Nothing against that. All right, next thing is um, water, carrying water. Uh, here in Florida, you're going to carry a lot more water than some, maybe somewhere up north, or if you're in some mountains where there's a lot of streams and stuff, and you can purify water easy. You can, might you might use one of these. This is a water bladder. Fill it up with water, and this here hose runs out to your pack. It rather works like so. Bladder is on your back, hose comes over your shoulder, and you can sip the water. Hmm, that's tasty. Anyway, but I don't really like to use bladders that much. Well, I don't like to depend on bladders. I'll use them, but I don't want to put all my water in them. Like, this is a three liter bladder. That'd be about most of the water that I would need. But if this got a hole in it somehow, I wouldn't be a happy camper. I'd be a very thirsty camper. So I like to use um, Nalgene bottles. I don't have one here to show you, but you can just look them up, Nalgene bottles. Those things are great, almost indestructible. I mean, you probably run over one with a car. I mean, these things are great. And that's what I would use to carry my water in. And if you don't have that, then a Powerade or Gatorade bottle. Those work well, too. All right, next thing is this gigantic Ziploc bag. Now when you're packing everything in your backpack, like this big Osprey, you're going to want to line your backpack with something, like this big Ziploc or a garbage bag. I like this big Ziploc because the plastic is more durable than a garbage bag, but a garbage bag will work just fine. But you want to put that in your backpack and then put the stuff inside here. That way if you're like wading through water or something or it starts to rain, all your stuff, the water will go soak. The water will go through your pack's um, fabric, and but if it has a, a barrier like this plastic with, that all your stuff is in, you'll be just fine. You'll be right as rain. <laughs> all right. Next thing is this. This is a um, Thermolite bivy sack. It's kind of in tatters from the last couple campouts I've had it on. It's seen a lot of action, but this thing will keep you really, really warm. And if I had that 45 degree bag and I started to get really cold, I could stick my bag and myself in this bad boy and it would add about 10 degrees of warmth. So that's pretty good. You want to have something like that. And it's really small and compact too. Very, very easy. All right, that's it for the miscellaneous cat. Oh, nope. There's a couple more things. All right, when you're out in the woods and there's no toilets, what do you have to do? You have to dig what's called a cat hole. Now, you don't want to use your hands for this because then your hands will get all dirty. So you can go down to your local Walmart or Campmore, buy yourself a trowel. Don't get a metal one, just get this cheap little orange plastic one. It'll work great. And there you go. All right, I'm not going to say anything more on that. That's pretty self-explanatory. 
Secondly, let me get a little closer to the camera here. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Um, when you're out in the woods and you're um, disposing of garbage, you don't have a garbage bag. So, what you probably want to do is dispose of your garbage in a coffee bag. These things work great. You can, you know, you open them up and stick all your garbage in there, close them up. Most of them have a little twisty tie thing here that just folds over. And it won't, it won't stink so much because you got that nice coffee-ish smell hiding it. And, you know, it's very secure. So that's just kind of a little tip and trick there. Okay, um, I'm going to try to start wrapping this video up. One second. All right, last thing is cook kits, cookware. I do a lot of videos on cook, cook stuff. Okay. But for anybody who's like a newer camper, I'm just going to run down real quick stoves. Um, for most new people, they're going to go with a um, uh, fuel uh, canister stove. This is an example of a canister stove. Your fuel canister attaches down here and screws on. And this is where your flame comes out and you stick your pot on there. These are good stoves. They're just kind of heavy. But if you have a lot of people, one of those will do you fine. This is a wood burning stove. I made this myself. Um, you just pile your wood in there and light it up. and It's basically a little cook fire. Then there's alcohol stove. I'm not really going to go into those much. But um, then you got your cook pots. You can use a wide pot like this one. You're going to want to use a wide pot if you have a canister stove like this or a wood burning stove. It can work with alcohol stoves, but um, depends on which one you have. So a wide pot is good if you're having you know multiple people because you can again you know divide up the cook kit. This is a smaller pot for a smaller stove. It wouldn't work for something like this. You can see, it's almost, it almost fits down in there. So that's more for like an alcohol stove right there, the Heineken pot. Secondly, um, this is the last thing, I promise. Uh, when your meal is done, most people eat it out of the pot or eat it out of a freezer bag. But if you want to have utensils, this is what I use. I use a uh, Guy Out Design squishy bowl and squishy cup. And then you can get this, these little sporks. You can get light my fire spork, so this is an MSR spork, foldable spork, yeah. Or you can use an MRE and get, and get that Lexan spoon out of there. All right, that's most everything you are probably ever going to need to know about backpacking. I'm um, sorry this video took so long, but it was very in-depth. Thank you for watching. Have a very great day. Hang loose all your hammockers. See you later on the next Sawgrass Brothers videos.